it's a classic from round two. You was telling him to make adjustments for like swiveling the head. Tell me, you know, in your eyes, as far as um, your opponent's, um, you know, his skills, as far as his skills are concerned, and you coming into the fight, also the training camp coming into this fight as well. Um, I mean, training camp was good because we've been training for about a year. Um, I mean, he hasn't fought in 11 months prior to this weekend. He was on an 11th month layoff. So we was in the gym, man. We was in the gym just honing on his craft, working on his craft, keeping him in shape because he had a few potential dates that we thought he was going to uh, go ahead and have. Never went through. And it just kept on getting prolonged or whatnot. When we finally got the date, uh, you know, we did everything like we normally been doing. And then the last three weeks of camp, he likes to go out with Shakur Stevenson, Teray Stevenson, his cousin. He likes to go down there and he likes to cut his weight down there and, and, and you know, basically finish his camp. There is kind of something he's been doing as of recently. So once that all got said and done, um, it was fight time. Right. So we, you know, we went to the fight and you saw what happened. Do you go to Houston as well, or I didn't go. I didn't go to Houston with him this particular camp. Um, but again, I've been training him for like a year, basically. The last three weeks, he went ahead and he just went down there with with Tere, and um, just continued basically what we've been doing up here. And um, him and Shakur Stevenson, they got a really close relationship, so I'm sure he was being guided and helped by Shakur while he was down there. Um, it's a little different situation for me. I'm not totally used to letting a fighter leave my presence. Um, but it's kind of something that he's been doing uh, before I even became part of the team. I've been with Raymond now for, this This was my fifth fight with Raymond. Um, so, um, you know, it's just something that he's been doing before I came around. So it's kind of one of those situations where if it's, you know, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type thing. So mm -hmm. I come in, I do what I do. And uh, that was that. Um, okay. So now round one comes, um, the guy has pretty decent footwork, has a good jab, hits Raymond with actually three big shots. Um, what was going through your mind, um, at that moment and then gearing up to that, that corner talk, because we didn't get to hear you talk on that corner. We got to hear you talk on round two. So what were you saying on round one? Uh, first thing I told him is pick your right hand up because I seen he got timed over the top twice with a left hand over the top. Um, and um, we already know that Komatov has 12 knockouts or 11 knockouts out of his 12 or 13 fights. He basically knocked everybody out except one person. Um, and he was doing a really good job in the first round of keeping his distance um, he was timing his jab with Raymond. So my thing was, I didn't want Raymond to get caught in the early rounds, you know, especially while he's not fully warmed up yet. So it was safety first for me. And I basically told him to keep his hands up and stay sharp defensively. Um, that's what I told him in the first round. Okay. Round two comes, you tell him that, you know, keep your head off the swivel, you're shooting punches with with your head straight up, um, and, you know, your opponent has Okotov, what was his name? Uh, Oderbeck Kamatov. I get, I always pronounce his name uh, improperly, I believe, so don't don't quote that, but it's somewhere around the Kamatov. line. Kamatov, all right, yeah. well, it's a Kamatov, all right. So, Kamatov has success in the early half of the fight. Um, what do you think that was due to? Man, I mean, listen, he had over 200 amateur fights. He won a bunch of Asian gold tournaments. <clears throat> I think he's just a very good fighter. I think that, you know, he worked his way up to number one in the WBA for a reason. Um, he's knocked out most of the people he's fought. Guys like Woods avoided him. Uh, nobody wanted to fight this guy. This is the number one guy. Uh, in the, in the division. And he's just a good fighter. I mean, nobody wants to, you know, give credit to guys, you know what I'm saying? But the truth is the guy was just a very good fighter, relatively unknown here in the United States. So therefore, you know, people don't really know what they're dealing with. Um, 
you know, I knew he was a good fighter going in. Um, and I always made sure that I, that, um, that I reminded Raymond of that because Raymond is a very confident fighter and he believes in his ability. But I also wanted to make sure that he realizes like, listen, Ray, you're good, but this guy is good as well. So we have to be sharp with this guy. And, uh, so my job was to keep him mentally focused and sharp throughout the fight. You know, um, what would you have to say just coming into the fight, knowing that they're two undefeated guys, but they're, you know, they're young and at the same time they're going for this title and they want, you know, they have like 12 fights. Like there's not, they don't have many, many fights. You know, what would you, what would you have to say about that doing to like going forward to like film study and stuff like that? You only got 12 of those. Are you going into the amateur background and checking out that stuff too? I looked at everything. I'm going to be honest, man. In the beginning, I didn't. In the beginning, I didn't. But then as I started to learn more about who we were fighting, I was like, yo, let me start watching this guy a little bit. And uh, I went as far. I watched all his sparring. I mean, he has sparring clips. I watched heavy bag clips. I watched, you know, all his fights. Um, and the more I watched them, uh, the I had mixed feelings about him at first. I started to feel like he was going to be a super easy opponent. Then it changed. And I started to say to myself, this guy's going to be difficult. And then, uh, you know, me not seeing Raymond for three weeks, him going down to Houston for three weeks. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, I'm not there. And, um, you know, so going into the fight, um, I was definitely nervous, uh, probably just as nervous as the fighters were. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I also, you know, by the grace of God, uh, got a good eye for boxing and I was able to make adjustments in the fight, you know, as I seen them. And one thing that I realized uh, in the fight was that, and not just this fight, film study as well, just so you know, and I knew that this was going to be in my pocket the whole time, was that Odebeck doesn't do good when punches are being thrown back at him. So he's a guy who builds off of a momentum. And Raymond likes to box from the outside. But the only issue, I, I could see Raymond boxing from the outside, but also inviting uh, Odebeck to him. And when you're inviting a guy to you, you can get caught with a big shot. And I already knew we were dealing with a power puncher. So once I seen that, he was kind of like going jab for jab with Ray. You know, when I kind of told them to stay off the center line, because there was a few times that they were jabbing each other, but they would both hit each other. If you notice, like both their heads snapped back as they were jabbing each other. Mm -hmm. So I want Raymond to get into this jab thing where they're... That's how close this fight is, you know? Yeah, I didn't want him to fall into this mode of, you know, we're exchanging jabs, we're ex exchanging left hands, we're exchanging hooks, because we all know that's what a puncher wants. A puncher wants to exchange those shots with you especially at mid-range. So that's when I decided, you know what, we got to step directly to him. We got to close the distance. We got the the, the shorter arms, the quicker punches. Mm -hmm. um, worked tremendously on our inside game over the past five camps that I've been with him. Because um, that was one of the main things besides the, me focusing on his jab. I focused on a lot of, I focus on everything in the inside game has been one of the main things. And um, I told him, like, listen, we got to go to him. We got to step to him. So you 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 believe that while doing the research of Odebeck, his his uh, inside game was kind of uh, weak, not necessarily um, something that you guys could take advantage of. Yeah, because he likes to throw his punches a little bit wide. You know, he's got that Uzbekistan style. Those guys like to open up their punches to get more power. And don't get me wrong, that can be effective. He's also taller, um, so he had the longer reach. So I knew on the, at a closer distance that Raymond had enough defensive skills that he can go ahead and catch and smother a lot of those shots. And I knew that he could punch in between those shots. Um, and um, so I took, you know, I, I went ahead and took the chance on Raymond and said, listen, let's go to him. Let's, and I feel like Odebeck's kind of like a bully because I watched him fight a really short fighter. Um, I forget the guy's name. He's like a Tarzan or something. And even though Odebeck won the fight, um, when that guy threw at Odebeck, Odebeck had a tendency of not punching like he kind of covered up. In this fight, you notice when Raymond decided to get offensive, even before he got the knockout, 
Odebeck went on his bicycle and started kind of trying to use the lateral movement. He's not a guy who likes to engage when you're throwing back. So I knew deep down if Raymond starts to let his hands go and presses, that this guy was going to fold up a little bit, you know. And um, we made that adjustment around round three is when I kind of said, listen, it's time to step to him. And um, if you looked at, I looked at, I watched the fight for the first time yesterday on television. And I mean, they had Raymond losing the first four. So luckily we made that adjustment early. Even though I don't think he lost the first four watching it on TV, I thought he actually did better than what they were saying. Um, I'm glad they were close rounds. They were close rounds, could have went either way, but I thought Raymond was doing better than they were saying. They they had a clean shutout after four. but at the same time, I, I'm glad we pressed on the gas because when we pressed on the gas, that was what created that 12 round stop. What, what rounds did you think you had in the back? Um, you know, he didn't look bad in the first round to me. Second round, he didn't look. Nah, bad. he lost the first round though. He did lose it. I mean, yeah. I, I, I didn't he score had, it. Odebeck had the better the, the those. Two oh yeah, yeah, over. yeah, 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 yeah. He did lose it because he got caught with those two left hands over the top. I agree. He did lose the first and round. And he won the judges over because I heard the crowd going crazy. Yeah, the second round, I can't remember. Third round, Raymond was clearly winning and then got clipped. And he kind of fell off balance, got a little, like, his legs kind of shook under him a Number little bit. Number two, right? But that, 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 was, that was three. That was three. Um, and then. I, so, but round two, he, he got tripped up on the, what, the mat, was it? I can't remember. I'm gonna have to go. Remember back. he that he that he went and he tripped and he went all the way to the ropes. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the the second or the third. I can't. That's remember. the second. Okay, and then the third round he was actually really doing really well, like completely dominating. And he actually got caught with a shot that kind of shook him up a little bit. Yep. Yep. I remember. So yeah, I guess you could argue he lost the first three. I don't remember the fourth, but again, I knew that. I knew that. Um that we had to step to him. I just knew that that's what we had to do. And it's actually good that he didn't step to him necessarily in the first three because that's when a, a puncher is his most dangerous. So, it, 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 you know, we kind of, I think we, I think everything went, you know, as it was supposed to go. I mean, we, we, we were down by a point or two on two judges' scorecards. So, yeah, we could have lost a decision. But Raymond did pick it up. And if you notice throughout the fight, I I actually wanted more out of Ray. Like, I wanted him to actually do more activity. Even though he was having success, I feel like he could. Watching it on film, it didn't look bad to me. But in the moment, in the fight, I felt like he needed to do more. I just felt it in my soul. I was like, he has to do more. You guys, why I stood on. So you're the underdog in this fight. Yeah, I just felt like I just felt like he had to continue to push, 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 push. There was moments where he was just walking in, catching shots on his arms. I didn't want him to do I wanted him to catch and shoot immediately. I didn't want him to wait. And I understand, you know, he's the fighter. He's got to feel it. He's the one who's expending the energy. So that's why in one of the rounds I told him, I said, I know you're the one doing the work, but you got to do the work. That's what I told him. I said. I know you're the one doing it, so please understand that I understand. I don't want to be that guy like, yo, you don't get it. You're not the one in here. I understand. But at the end of the day, you're a professional, and that's what you got to do. You got to do the fucking work if you want to win this world title. Mm-hmm.